Ms. Silverwood. <clears throat> Joe Bots, paternopologists, Kool-Aid cultists, paterno people, child rape enablers. We've all heard that. I've been a victim of it. I've had people spit that in my face. Enough is enough. For over two years, Penn Staters have made one simple demand, find the full truth in the Sandusky scandal. The free report had a chance to do so, but it failed. It failed miserably. The free report was an utter debacle in nearly all ways, not just its unfounded, distorted conclusions about Penn State's culture, its values, and the four principles in question, but in the way in which it was delivered via a grandstanding press conference beamed nationwide from a ballroom in Philadelphia. Its methodology and conclusions have been discredited by the facts, by reports from leading experts in fields, in their fields, and most surprisingly, by prosecution witnesses in subsequent legal proceedings. To those of us watching closely from the beginning, it seems this false narrative was the very outcome the executive committee sought, and it enabled the NCAA to impose unprecedented sanctions. To this day, Mark Emmert struggles under the misperception that Free had subpoena power. You promised transparency, yet you are spending tens of thousands of dollars attempting to keep emails generated by the Fraser Task Force from the public domain hiding behind attorney-client privilege. Someone waived that privilege to enable former General Counsel Baldwin to testify before the grand jury. Who has that power and did the board vote on it? It is in Mr. Free's contract to appear before the university to discuss his findings. In addition, Jim Clementi and Dick Thornburg are at the ready to answer any questions the board and the community might have. The truth should scare no one, yet barriers are continually raised, denying a community of people unfairly smeared by Free's unsupported conclusions the answers to which they are entitled. The Free Report also missed a critical opportunity to educate the public on the identification of child sexual victimization, and instead use the platform created by this scandal to sensationalize the blaming of Joe Paterno. This was a terrible service not only to Penn Staters, but also to all parents, grandparents, and children in our state. The third annual conference on child protection and well-being is scheduled this May at the Nittany Lion Inn. It is sponsored by Penn State's Network on Child Protection and Well-Being. As the network's mission is to educate on child maltreatment through teaching, research, and service, this May conference would be a phenomenal venue to incorporate a community panel discussion with Drs. Frazier and Knoll, Mrs. Free and Clemente, and Governor Thornburg. Trustee Frazier tells me there are no do-overs in life. However, there are public apologies, retractions, and setting the record straight. I am confident that I speak for tens of thousands of Penn Staters to demand that the board marginalize the free report, publicly refute its key findings about Penn State's values and culture, apologize to the Paterno family, the Letterman, and the university community at large. Lastly, the media has been the most uh, vocal about shouting these buzzwords of culture, secrecy, and actively conspire to conceal. And yet, when it comes to investigating, researching, or asking questions of the second mile, children and youth services, and our state agencies, we get silence from you. These are licensed entities staffed with trained professionals that accepted and approved, embraced and encouraged, lauded and applauded a preferential child sexual offender. And they did so for decades. Stop sweeping this under the rug, stop turning a blind eye, and stop your silence. Enough is enough. Thank you.